For this project, I'm gonna show you how to create a soft slab twist base. So we're not gonna use a template that we trace, but we are going to treat this rectangular slab to a series of scoring and folding so we can go from our two-dimensional shape to our three-dimensional form. If we just start with it straight up and down, we're just gonna have a straight up and down rectangular vase, which would be fun as well, but we want a bit of a twist. So to get that twist, we have to cut away these outside edges. You can also do a three-sided vase, and it would be the same idea. We have to start with the ankle, we're gonna mimic that, and then through a series of scoring and slipping and folding, we're gonna go from 2D to 3D. So let's get started. To get started, you do need to have rolled out a slab. Make sure you've compressed your slab in all directions, up and down and side to side using a rib. from the bottom up. Then I will go from left to right. And then right to left. And then I will flip. So I'm gonna put one hand out, roll my slab onto that and flip it over. Once again, I will go from the top to the bottom from the bottom to the top, left to right, and right to left. We can press to make this slab nice and strong. And also this helps to remove any canvas texture if you were using a slab roller that had canvas. Next step is to create a straight edge on the bottom of your slab. I have this slab slightly overhanging the table and I'm gonna line up my ruler to the edge of my table. I will pull my fettling knife against the table and the edge of the ruler. Make sure you hold the ruler down to secure it. And I'm just gonna pull towards me. Okay. So now I'm gonna measure from the bottom of my slab to the top of my slab so I can get the same height all the way across. Now I'm gonna line up my ruler with my marks that I made using my fettling knife, making sure it's cleaned off so I get a nice clean cut. I'm gonna pull the blade against my ruler. Now we have a rectangle that is 13 and three quarters of an inch all the way across. The next thing I wanna do is just make this outside edge straight and I'm just gonna eye it up. If I had a square, I would use that. So once again, using my ruler, the straight edge of my ruler, and pulling my fettling knife against that. Okay, so now we have a straight edge on the bottom, straight edge on the top, and a straight edge on the left side. Okay, so now we have to decide how far we want to sink in our measurement to create our angle. That is gonna determine our twist, the amount of twist that our vase has. The farther you measure in on the top to create that angle,
the more aggressive your twist will be. So if you want just a very subtle twist, then going about an inch or an inch and a half will give you, an inch will give you like barely any twist, an inch and a half will give you a pretty subtle twist. The farther you go, the more aggressive your twist will be. Let's do a three inch twist, and then you guys can see how much of a twist three inches gives you. So just at the top, I placed my ruler and I measured over three inches. Now I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna match it to that line that I just made at the top, indicating my three inches. And I'm gonna take from here to the corner of the bottom of my slab. So placing the ruler at my three inch mark, going to the corner, I'm gonna make a track line with my needle tool. I've made my mark at the top, down to my corner. So I have created this cutout that we are going to make here, the angled edge. I'm gonna put my ruler back using the straight edge of it, taking my fettling knife and cutting out my angle. Now we have to determine how wide we want each side to be. They all have to be the same. So you have to measure your shortest edge, which will be your top edge, I have 15 inches available. So if I'm doing the three sided base, I could have all my size be five inches, or I could do two inches, three inches, four inches, but no more than five. So, so if we're going to go with three inches, that means we need to have at least nine inches available on the top in the bottom. If you want four, then you need at least 12 available. So every side is the same. So it all depends on how wide you want your vase to be. For this particular vase, I had my sides at three inches. So I have a much more slender vase. For this particular form, I did my sides at five inches. So quite a bit of a different shape. This is a four-sided vase and this is the three-sided. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do five inches on each of my sides just so I can get a wider vase. So I am going to measure at the top first and I'm gonna make a mark every five inches. You do need to have some clay left over for your bottom. So if you didn't roll out another slab, you may want to choose to do a smaller vase because if you did three, six, nine, and you cut this, you will still have a considerable amount of slab left to use for your bottom. Okay, so I marked my five inches on the top. Then I have to do the same thing on the bottom. <laughs> five inch marks on the top and on the bottom. So now I'm gonna line up my ruler from my first five inch mark and I'm gonna make a light line from the top to the bottom. Now I'll line up my second mark and make a very light line with my needle tool. And then my last mark now I can just get rid of this excess clay here at the end because I'll have my three sides measured and ready. So I'm just gonna take my fettling knife and just get rid of this extra clay. So I, like I was saying, either roll out a larger slab or create smaller sides if you wanna have enough room left over on your slab for your bottom. If not, roll out another slab. At the same time, you roll out this one so they're the same moisture level when you go to attach this to your bottom. You can see we have our slab and it's measured out. 
with our three five inch sections. For this project, we want to work with the benefits of the soft slab and the soft slab's ability to be able to be folded to go from 2D to the 3D. So we are going to take a scoring tool. I have this nice rake scoring tool and I'm gonna make a straight line score following our needle tool mark. So just a straight line, not traditional scoring where you're doing the X's, we just want a straight up and down line. This score line is gonna encourage that clay to bend where we want it to bend so we can start to create our separate sides. You can go ahead right now if you want as well and score your outside edges because we will be putting these edges together. You could score your bottom right now as well if you'd like. We need some slip. So this slip I made with the same clay body I'm using and I'm going to slip the score lines I just created. And this slip and this added moisture is also gonna help encourage this slab to bend on those lines we created so we can start to get our sides. I'm gonna hold off on slipping the bottom right now or it gets stuck when I go to lift it up. We have now scored and slipped. I'm gonna start by lifting this outside edge and placing my arm underneath of it. I'm gonna take my fingers and start to push down to the inside of that first score line. While my outside hand is holding this up and now it's starting to apply some pressure to that score line right at the bottom. And you can see because we slipped and we scored and because we're directing our pressure, we're able to fold this and create our side. Now you can run your finger against that bottom edge and that's gonna compress it. And how we talked about earlier when we were compressing our slab, compression gives the clay strength. So by compressing that, that clay wants to stand right up. I'm gonna use this yellow rib and just straighten that a bit more. Now, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna lift with my arm and my fingers on the outside are pushing up against this. My inside hand is supporting and I'm working from the top to the bottom and just pushing inward. Now I'm running my middle and index finger against this just to tighten that up. Now I do wanna make sure I'm not sticking to the table. You can work on canvas or newspaper if you'd like. It's totally up to you. I just kinda keep picking up my form and moving it to make sure I'm not stuck. Now I'm gonna take the straight edge of this rib and just push up against the slab so that stands up a bit more. So now I have to lift this and put these two edges together. We're not gonna be beveling both of these sides when we put it together. We're gonna put it together and overlap it and just pinch those two sides together. Because the clay I'm using, I know, has a tendency to get stiff pretty fast, I'm just going to do a little additional scoring and add a little more slip so I can really be sure that my sides want to come together nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna stand the form up 
and I'm gonna do this towards you guys so you can see it. Okay, so in order to get our twist, we need to make sure this corner attaches to this corner. So I have to lift this up a little bit or push the other one down and I'm gonna just pinch those two together. Now I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna line up the top and the bottom and I'm lining this inside corner on both of these together because we're gonna pinch that in. So we want to have this inside edge and this side edge come together. And we wanna have this corner and this corner come together. So I'm lining those up. I'm just gonna pinch that together. Now that we have it tacked at the top and the bottom, we can go ahead and line up those same edges. So at some point you may need to get your hand inside and push out. If you created a more narrow form, don't worry about it because you will still be able to do this without getting your hand on the inside. Get this tacked together all the way from the bottom to the top. You can flip it if you need to. So I'm just applying pressure. You can see with my, mostly my middle and index finger, but my whole hand is really supporting this mission. Just gonna run my finger up the side. You should see slip, squeeze out because we scored and slipped this. This clay is nice and soft, so it's more easily attaching to the other side. And then you can take one of your ribs, if you have a red one, that's a great one, and just start to push in to attach this together. If you don't have a rib, just use your fingers and you can also wring out your sponge really well and compress using your sponge. The more shaping you do along your sides with a rib, the more that twist is gonna come out. So I'm really pushing in and shaping these corners compressing these corners. You can see compressing with one of these ribs is really gonna start to have that twist show itself a bit more. You do wanna make sure you compress all of your corners I don't know if you can see, but it is cracking a little bit on some of my edges. So it is important that you compress those edges, add a little moisture with your well wrung out sponge if you need to, just to make sure you don't have any of that cracking. Every clay body is a little different, so your particular clay might do a little more cracking or a little less. up your form, refine it, get the shape you want, then leave it out for about 20 minutes so it can stiffen up slightly. Then you want to come in, lay the coil in the corner that you squeezed together. In the other corners where you slipped and scored, you should actually see an accumulation of slip that looks almost like a coil. All you need to do in those two corners is make sure you somehow compress that slip into those 
corners because it is acting as a coil. So we just wanna blend it in and have it help keep those corners nice and strong and secure. So either with a the end of a paintbrush or a dowel or an actual paintbrush, go into those two or three, if you made a four-sided form, where you fold it and just really clean up where that slip has made almost a coil on the inside for you. In this side that you had to bring the two parts together and pinch, it's a good idea to run a coil down that to prevent cracking. If you can't get your coil all the way to the middle, at least run a coil from here to here and then here to here. And it helps to bring it over that corner because I have noticed that occasionally this corner at the very top will want to crack. So sometimes blending a coil on the inside from here to here and just running it across that edge helps. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll out a very thin coil. You don't need a lot. Okay, that should be long enough and it's about the thickness that we want. Now I'm gonna find the corner where the two sides came together, and I'm gonna try to get in there and do a light score just to add a bit of texture. And I can't get all the way down and in, so I'm just gonna go as far as I can reach flip and do the same on the opposite side as far down as I can. I can get in a little bit farther on this side all the way down actually. So I'm going so I'm going all the way in and scoring. Then I'll add a little slip into that corner. I'm gonna score just a little bit up into that corner onto the top and blend some of my coil right onto that top as well. Okay, now I'll take my coil and I'm just gonna run it down, tack it at the top and feed it into this corner. Thankfully, my form is wide enough that I can get my hand all the way in. If yours is more narrow, like I said, go ahead and just do the coil from like here to here, flip it and do the same on the opposite side. Then you at least have a coil supporting the top and the bottom. So I'm blending that in. I'm gonna flip my form, grab my coil, lay it the rest of the way in this corner. Sometimes I find if I get my finger a little bit wet, then I can just slide from about the middle of the coil up, really compressing that coil into that corner. We don't wanna just lay the coil there and not come in and compress it. The whole point of the coil is to add some extra glue compression and security to that corner that came together. So you do wanna make sure you get in there and really compress it or else you're just laying a coil in there and it won't do anything if you don't come in and make it be part of the wall. You can keep flipping it so you have better access. But yes, if you do not compress this coil, it'll probably just end up cracking out of the form and it won't serve any purpose. Because I was pushing out with my inside hand to secure that coil, I'm gonna come in with a rib and just 
compress this corner on the outside as well. If you don't have a rib, go ahead and just take your sponge and squeeze that edge and apply some pressure. The sponge will bring out the grog if you have grog or sand in your clay. So just be mindful of that. Once your form has been cleaned up and refined, it is time to attach your bottom. Before or after you slip the bottom, you should put your piece on your extra piece of clay and trace a line around it. And then also make a mark up the side. I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna make a mark on the bottom so you know where this goes back on. I'm gonna lift this off. So score and slip your bottom and make sure you're really scoring. You should see bits of clay coming off your form. You should be getting like an eighth inch deep line, taking the tool in one direction in a diagonal line and then going in the opposite to create X's, crisscross X's. Add slip. Okay. Now I'm going to take my scalpel or X-Acto blade and I'm going to cut about an eighth inch, an eighth inch to a quarter inch past the line, the trace line that I created. And I'm going to cut at an angle, at a 45 degree angle. So I'm not going to make my cut straight up and down. I'm going to turn my blade at a 45 and I'm gonna cut outside of that outlined line that I created. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. So now you can see we have this bevel, beveled edge. Now I have to score my floor. If you haven't scored the bottom of your form yet, do that now. Add slip. When you're scoring your bottom, be mindful of the mark that you made so you know where this is gonna go back onto your form. Remember that line that we made? Go ahead and extend that. It's all gonna look pretty much the same, but these aren't exactly the same, so you do want to attach it so it fits together really well. I'm gonna attach my piece to my floor and then I'm gonna tap it up and down onto the table. Now where that extra clay is, I'm gonna take the firmer yellow rib and I'm gonna blend that up onto the form because that's gonna seal that floor to your walls. It would be really hard to get down in here and get a coil in there. So we're doing an external coil. Make sure you go all the way around and move that excess slab up the form. And you can put it on its top and compress and give this a nice bevel on the bottom so it looks nice and refined and clean. that up and compress a bit more. You can lightly tap in your bottom if you'd like to help with future
condensation if you're gonna have water in this because it's a vase. It helps to have a little bit of a concave area on the bottom. of a bevel on this internal edge just makes the vase nice and refined and more inviting. You can still continue to shape this a bit more if you'd like. If you still wanted to alter the shape, it's still soft enough at this point that you can do that. If you're completely done, just take a piece of plastic and parachute over the top and let this dry nice and slow. I recommend 24 to 48 hours under cover at minimum, or you could take even longer to let it dry more slowly. Okay, so that's it. Happy creating. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.